This calculus video will be about the following problem. Can we plot all solutions of x to the y equals y to the x? So we start by thinking about trivial solutions. Well, there are some obvious solutions. We can just take x equals y. There's another solution. 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 4 to the power of 2. So that gives us an extra two points and a line. And in order to find all other solutions, I'm going to give two different methods. So the first method, let's just raise both sides to the power of 1 over x, y. Then we find x to the 1 over x equals y to the 1 over y. So we've got to find values of x and y that have the same value of this function. Well, we can um, take the logarithms of both sides. So the logarithm of this is just the logarithm of x over x. And that has to be the logarithm of y over y. So whenever we've got powers, it's best to write them in terms of logarithms and exponentials. So obviously what we should do is we should draw the graph of log of x over x to see what it looks like. And the graph looks a bit like this. Um, so um, it's equal to 0 at x equals 1. For x less than 1, it tends to minus infinity. And as x tends to infinity, it tends to 0 because x is much bigger than log of x. So it looks something like this. Here's the point 1. And obviously, we should find out what the maxima um, of this function are. So we differentiate log of x over x. And using the usual rule for derivative of a quotient, we find this is equal to 1 over x times x minus um, um, minus log of x times 1, all divided by x squared, which is equal to 1 minus log of x over x squared. So this vanishes when log of x is equal to 1. In other words, when x is equal to e. So this is the point where x is equal to e. And you see this derivative is negative for x bigger than e, so it decreases all the way here, and it's positive for x less than e, so the slope is always positive there. So that, that gives us a good idea of what this function looks like. Now we want to find points x and y that have the same value of this function. Well, obviously, if x and y are the same, then they have the same value. So what about when x and y are not the same? Well, we could take x to be here and y to be up there, for example. And then if we make x a bit bigger, we find y is there. And if x is a bit bigger, y is there, and so on. So we can see that as x increases from 1 to infinity, the value of y decreases from infinity to 1. And they cross over at this point here, where x and y are both e. So with this information, we can now plot the points where x to the y equals y to the x. And the answer we get looks like this. Um, we um, just take x and y axis, and let's plot where x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. And then, um, first of all, we have the points where x equals y. And then we have the points where x starts at 1 and increases to infinity, and y starts at infinity and decreases down to 1. So that ends up looking a bit like this. And as we saw, they meet at the point E, E. So the points where x to the y equals y to the x consists of two components, and they cross at this point here. Um, so that gives one solution, and I guess we can mark in the special values for 2 and 2, 4. Um, there's an alternative algebraic solution we can give. What we do is we make the substitution y equals t times x, which is a very common and useful substitution. And then the equation x to the y equals y to the x becomes x to the tx equals tx 
to the x. Now we can take the x root of both sides and we find x to the t equals tx. Now we divide by x, x to the t minus 1 is equal to t. And now if t equals 1, we just get the solution x equals y. If t is not equal to 1, we can take the t minus 1 through to both sides. So we get x is equal to t to the 1 over t minus 1. This is for t not equal to 1. And y is equal to t times this, which is equal to t to the t over t minus 1. So, um, so as t varies from 0 to infinity, this gives a parametric formula for this curve here. For example, um, if t um, is, in, is very large, then x is about 1 and y is about infinity. So here we have t tends to infinity. And here we have t tends to 0. As t tends to 1, the limit of t to the 1 over t minus 1 is e. So the limit as t tends to 1 of t to the 1 over t minus 1 is equal to e. So at t equals 1, we get this point here. This point here is where t equals 2, t equals a half. And we can do other things. For instance, if we take t equals 3, we find x is equal to the square root of 3, and y is equal to 3 times the square root of 3. So we get another point here, t equals 3 point root 3, 3 root 3, and so on.